Another case of the Philippine Sea Effect. And you might be thinking, Robert, what is the Philippine Sea Effect? I'm new here. The Philippine Sea Effect is this phenomenon we see every single year in the Philippine Sea where rapid intensification takes place with tropical systems, going from a tropical storm to near super typhoon status in less than 24 hours. I'm meteorologist Robert Spetta. Let's talk about Leon, also known as Kong Ray, which has strengthened quite significantly since my last update. It still has this big donut shape on it, very large eye, and a very expansive wind field. So yes, the center of circulation is still expected to miss northeastern Luzon, but we have all these rain bands and pretty much a lot of convection on the western periphery of this that is going to extend those tropical storm strength now as well away from the center and that inner eye wall of course very potent which is going to be scraping the Batanas and Basco Islands but I want to show you this this is the advanced Dvorak analysis all right friends this is showing in knots on the right and we were having this just kind of right at tropical storm status up until about 24 hours ago and here in the red you can see that rapid intensification that was taking place now winds are estimated up to about 120 knots not quite super typhoon status but it's there it's right near there dangerous storm i like this graphic from bagasse so bagasse has been doing a good job guys tracking this storm system and he can show the extents of the wind field for tropical storm strength well away from the center also uh just to confirm th this is making that northwesterly churn as expected most guidance and agencies all agree of a likely landfall in southeastern Taiwan. But once again, this wind field is extensive, which is why Signal Force 2 has been issued for a good portion of northern Luzon from Cagayan, Isabella, extending all the way back towards the west into Abra, uh, Ilocos Norte, and even Signal Force 1 all the way down towards, well, Catanduanas and even parts of the Bicol region. You don't need any more rainfall out there, friends. I understand. Um, and it, thankfully, the storm, you're not getting the same impacts you got with uh, Christine. You might be thinking also why the churn towards an orb. This is climatologically unusual for this storm system. Usually this time of year, we have straight runners. They head off towards Luzon, and we the, the very rare they make a churn like this. It's because of this troughing. You see right here in the jet stream right there, you have a trough. Right here is the West Pack High. Now, during Christine, this extended further towards the West, which allowed that storm system to run directly over Luzon. But now, due to the degradation of that, the weakening, that is allowing our storm system to turn towards north and head off towards uh, Taiwan versus uh, coming on shore here in the Philippines. But too close for comfort to say the very least uh just because of how rapidly the storm system has intensified and just due to the fact that all this convection is still on the western periphery of it and it's just just big donut shape of a storm uh big fat eye in there now the bigger the eye doesn't mean it's stronger uh if anything it means there's a more expansive wind field around our storm system allowing it to impact over a broader area and even despite the fact you know well offshore we're still going to be seeing those gusty conditions across santa Ana. i wouldn't be a surprise if we see a storm surge at the mouth of the cagayan river and of course the broad impacts across the islands here um in luzon strait which uh shout out to everybody a bunch of people that do watch these videos from there and you guys you, you, you are, I want to visit during a storm just to see how you prepare because they get all the typhoons. So a shout out to everybody out there across the, the Batanas and Basco Islands here. Hey, um, the storm system coming on shore though into uh, southeastern Taiwan as we go ahead through Thursday morning heading to about noon time. Uh, right front quadrant toe uh, really going to just be impacting places like, um, I always butcher the name, Hawaiian uh extending all the way back towards north into even taipei you're still going to be seeing those winds come around from the east now due to the southerly track taipei is going to be more sheltered but there is going to be some funneling coming in from the north that is going to run up along the west coast of the mountains there so let's zoom in with our high resolution graphics via metro weather's weatherscape that's what i use here and a big shout out to all our patreon members sponsors who support this channel allow us to get these fantastic graphics and uh 
uh, yeah, you know, here we go. Our storm system tracking off towards the west here as we go ahead through our day on Wednesday. Those winds wrapping around from the north, of course, impacting the islands here. Far northeastern areas of Cagayan seeing the broader impacts, but even places like Ilocos Norte could still be looking at tropical storm strength winds. Why do you think they're still under signal force too? Heading into Thursday morning, here we're nearing landfall in southeastern Taiwan. Those winds wrapping around. Remember the right front quadrant, the dirty side of the storm, where you also could be looking at even some tornadic threats or at least these mesovortices kicking on by and then on the west coast as we often see you know the, the the mountains getting slammed here but the west coast getting some funneling scraping up through the taiwan strait so here's a look at the rainfall totals in the forecast um Unfortunately, uh, some of these areas out here towards the north still saturated following Christine. They may not seen the flooding you saw in the south, but they did get the rain. And this is more rain on top of that. Uh, so I do think we're going to see some flooding into northern areas of Kagai and parts of Ilocos Norte, maybe even to the Opera River Basin. We could see some water kind of getting pooled up and running down the Opera River. Meanwhile... Uh, for places like Batangas over towards, uh, uh, we're looking back towards um. Uh, be call region uh still got rain in your forecast but not a lot so that's good news i uh, i don't anticipate a, a big flood threat out across those areas yeah it could pick up as we go ahead through the 29th into the 30th you know we're going to look still look at some inflow from the tail of this storm system so that is something i do want to watch as we uh watch this move towards north and you still see the inflow kind of wrap around behind it just like this uh Trami just ripped apart as expected i know there was a lot of rumors and we've been saying every single one of the videos i expected northeast monsoon to come through and rip this apart and the leftover moisture to kind of wrap around in this what you would call a tail of this storm system and pull it towards the west and that's why you got those rain showers on the west coast as we watch this pull off towards the north and eventually this is going to get sheared apart and kick off towards mainland uh, japan actually just kind of circumnavigating okinawa for our friends out there who watch these updates so let's look at the rain totals yeah the east coast of taiwan is going to get bathed in this heavy precipitation uh red indicates 300 millimeters and i usually just keep that at the top end of my threshold on my legend you can see in the top here uh it's not unusual it's not usual to get numbers higher than that uh but taiwan is the exception uh easy easy getting 500 to a thousand uh, millimeters of precipitation and yes once again the forecast track has changed further towards the west i understand that but now we are seeing that confidence in that northwesterly churn going back to that uh, troughing towards our north that is going to allow it to make that northerly uh, churn here too so a broad range of impacts here of course the rain um an expansive wind field coming out of this storm system so a lot to talk about here as we look ahead over the upcoming days with now uh, a strong potent typhoon leon also known as kong ray internationally so make sure you prepare to evacuate if you need to big shout out to everybody who supports this channel too uh here on our patreon if you like these updates and you're thinking oops if you like these updates and you're thinking man i i i want to support uh, first off, hit that like and subscribe button. That sounds silly, but uh, we need to get up to 100,000 subscribers because once we do, we can verify the channel, and uh, that helps with the algorithm. It's a silly YouTube thing, but uh, it, it does help. So if you're watching this on any other platform, make sure you, you hit that subscribe button. And check out our Patreon, uh, Westpac Weather, if you can just search it up, or even a PayPal down below. These are all small things. Um, it, it helps. That's all. Uh, but... Right now, let's concentrate on the task at hand, and that's making sure everybody stays safe during the storm system. Uh, potent typhoon, thankfully not making landfall, but too close for comfort for the Philippines. Unfortunately, it is going to be making landfall here in southeastern Taiwan, around Taitung. Yeah, you're all going to be getting some, some pretty rough impacts here. S stay safe out there, friends.